Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the FSBPT content outline. Uh, in most of these sessions, we do practice questions and today's no different. We'll be doing a practice question related to the musculoskeletal system. As you know, as we go through the NPT podcast, we go through the content outline and this uh, as uh, you know, we've talked about this many times now, but the content outline describes the number of questions that are represented in each of the sections. And we follow that as a part of our, our outline and not only in our courses, but also throughout the podcast. And so today we'll be talking about the musculoskeletal system. And so the musculoskeletal system, this is the largest system on the exam, somewhere around 60 questions related to this and clearly something you need to spend a bunch of time on. I talk about this all the time too, but you need to spend about 75% of your time in the big three systems, cardio, muscular, and neuro, because those three, that, that contains the majority or about 75% of the test just within those three sections. So just a reminder, when we do our crash courses, we try to hit the cardio, muscular, and neuro one more time right before every test day. So the way we have that structured is that as you approach any given exam day, we start three weeks before. So for instance, if you were to start almost always, the PT exam, the NPT is held in the third or fourth week, almost always the fourth week of the month. So either January, April, July, or October, typically near the end of the month. And so three weeks prior, we start our crash course. This is where we go through cardio, muscular, and neuro one more time just to help make sure you've got the 75% of the tests solid in your mind and ready to go. And so the way this is structured is that we go through each of the main body areas or body systems, these main body systems, but the content areas, including examination, differential diagnosis, prognosis, intervention, and then intervention. We go through each of these and then cap that off with practice questions each week so that you can apply what you've learned to make sure that you are, are, are really solid in what you're, uh, yeah, what you're about on test day. So today we're talking about the musculoskeletal system. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question. As per our usual, I will read you the practice question, give you a moment to respond to it, and then we will continue on with the content. So here we go. A 30-year-old male patient is being evaluated for low back pain following a lifting injury that occurred three days ago. The patient reports that the onset of pain was immediate following the incident and is exacerbated with standing or bending forward. The patient reports that the pain is alleviated with sitting. Examination results include a negative straight leg raise test. Plain x-ray, sorry, plain film x-rays are negative for pathology. Which of the following diagnoses is most likely present? So again, 30-year-old male patient evaluated for low back pain following a lifting injury that occurred three days ago. The patient reports that the onset of pain was immediate following the incident and is is exacerbated with standing or bending forward. The patient reports that the pain is alleviated with sitting. Examination results include a negative straight leg raise test and plain film x-rays are negative for pathology. Which of the following diagnoses is most likely present? One, herniated nucleus propulsus. Two, lumbar muscle strain. Three, osteoarthritis. Four, spondylolisthesis. So we've got herniated nucleus propulsus, lumbar muscle strain, osteoarthritis, spondylolisthesis. All right, and the correct answer, as you can probably guess here, is, and not even just guess, you can ascertain from the information in the question, is the lumbar muscle strain. So we have the history, so that lines up nicely. We have a lifting injury where you had pain that was onset immediately following the injury. So a very acute pain onset we don't have any description of any neurological symptoms, so that would be characteristic of a herniated nucleus propulsus. The other thing that's interesting here is that the pain is exacerbated both with standing and with bending forward. This is because as you stand in the full upright posture, you are activating your back extensors, and as you lean forward or bend forward, you are stretching the back extensors, and so therefore, you can see how a strained muscle would be upset with activation or with stretching. So therefore, the, the correct answer here is that lumbar muscle strain. The other options, a herniated nucleus propulsus, although you may see something possibly x-ray, it's most likely you'd have to have an MRI to be able to truly visualize the herniated nucleus propulsus. And with a herniated nucleus propulsus, it's likely you'd have a positive straight leg raise test, meaning that you would reproduce the neurological symptoms downstream from the herniated disc impinging on the nerve roots. 
And then osteoarthritis and spondylolisthesis, both, both of these are bony abnormalities, likely to show up on x-ray. Uh, but the other thing about, uh, about osteoarthritis and spondylolisthesis is typically these are not acute onset diagnoses, we'll say that. Uh, osteoarthritis would occur certainly over time. And then the spondylolisthesis, usually you have some type of, of fracture or incident of the pars intraarticularis. When they, then you can eventually get slippage of the lumbar, uh, lumbar vertebral bodies as they slip anteriorly. In any case, typically there's more of a history to that. Plus you'd likely, with spondylolisthesis, likely also have neurological symptoms, especially if you were pinching on any of the nerve roots in the lumbar spine. So there you go. As uh, those of you who are watching this on our YouTube channel, I did post the, the slide or the, the table from the McGee textbook describing the differential diagnosis that occurs with mechanical low back pain. We talked today about muscle strain, uh, a little bit about herniated disc, osteoarthritis, and spondylolisthesis. Uh, of note would be spinal stenosis. This would be degenerative disc disease where the disc is being lost and you'd start to get stenosis or compression of the intravertebral foramina. That would be a case where you would have positive x-ray and positive straight leg raise test. And then scoliosis uh, would be another option. Typically, you have a younger onset or a younger patient, but a chronic onset would not be an acute onset, typically insidious. So, all right. Well, with that, we'll bring today's session to a conclusion. I appreciate you taking the time to go through these podcast episodes with me. I would encourage you to leave us a five-star review. Check us out wherever you find us on any of your podcasts. You can find our YouTube channel as well as ptfinalexam.com where you can find out all about our latest course offerings, any of our free stuff. We're always giving away free courses and free things. So check us out over there. Be sure to sign up for our email list and we'll get you the best, best outcomes and really try to make this the best experience possible. I know I was just at CSM and we were giving away Giving, it had some giveaways there at the booth. So be sure to stop by. If you ever go to combined sections meeting, you can stop by and see us. But uh, at that point, I was giving away some practice questions and I, I would tease the students and say, you know, that I act like this is a good thing, but it's really kind of a pain taking you through these questions. And we decided that it, it's not the questions you want, it's the questions you need. I'm trying to do my best Batman voice there. But in any case, I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care of yourselves. Catch you later. Wilcrane fist bumps all around. Talk to you soon.